Structs have two kinds of property. The first is a stored property, where you place a value into the struct directly. The second is called a computed property, and it recalculates the value of the property every time it's accessed. This means that these computed properties are basically a blend of stored properties and methods, in that they are accessed like stored properties, but they work like functions, they run some code. As an example, previously we had an employee struct that could track how many days our vacation employee had, and here's a simplified version. We have just name string and vacation int. Very simplified, but it's what we need for now. Well, you go ahead and make one of these people by saying var archer is employee sterling archer, vacation 14, subtract five days, print the vacation, subtract three days, print vacation. And that works as a trivial struct. But we're losing valuable information here. We're assigning this employee 14 days of vacation, then subtracting them as days are taken. But in doing so, we've lost how many days they were originally allocated. We can't tell. We've lost that initial value. Now, we could adjust this to use a computed property, like so. We now have a certain employee with a name string plus two variables, one for how much they've been allocated and one for how much they've taken so far. They're both stored integers. We're gonna add another integer now called vacation remaining. But look at this. Rather than having a value directly, you know, zero, one, two, whatever you want to, it actually has an open brace and a close brace. There's some functionality happening here. And it sends back the value of vacation allocated minus vacation taken. So rather than trying to make vacation remaining stored and we assign values to it directly again and again and again, it's calculated. Whenever we request it, it'll run that code. What's my current allocation? How much have I taken? That's the return every single time. And when we're reading from it, it looks just like a regular store property. It really is very nice. So we can go ahead and go over to Xcode and say, uh, let's do var archer, archer, is an employee with the name of Sterling Archer. And I'll do vacation allocated of 14. And then we'll say archer.vacation taken plus equals four. And then print archer.vacation remaining. Archer.vacation taken plus equals another four. Print archer.vacation remaining. Let's run it back. See how it looks. Boom. 10 and 6. Oops, you can see here, as we modify vacation taken and reread vacation remaining, it calls this mini function every time the property is read. It's computed, not stored. It's done dynamically. And this is really powerful stuff, I think, because we're, we're reading here what looks like a property. But behind the scenes, Swift's running some code to calculate its value every single time. We can't write to it though, because we haven't told Swift how to do that. We can't do archer.vacation remain equals 50. What does that mean, right? To fix that, we've got to provide what's called a getter and a setter, fancy names for code that reads and code that writes. Getters read and setters write. In this case, the getter is simple enough because it's just our existing code. This is how you get vacation remaining. But the setter is more interesting because if you set vacation remaining for an employee, do you mean you want their vacation allocated to go up? You've given them more or, or less? Or should vacation taken go up and down and we leave the other alone? You get to decide. Now I'm gonna assume the first of these is true. If we change someone's vacation remaining, we mean for the allocation uh, to go up or down. That's what we mean. And so we can write that into our code. First things first, the getter will do a get here. That marks the getter code. And a set here, we're gonna change their vacation allocation. Vacation allocation, there you go, rhymes. Uh, when we modify vacation remaining. So we'll say vacation allocated is now vacation taken plus new value. I'll come on to that in a second. First things first though, notice how get and set both mark pieces of our code to run when reading or writing a value. 
That's the easy part. New value is interesting though. This is a, one of the many magic values that Swift invents for us. This one is automatically provided to us by Swift inside the setter. Here is the new value that's being provided. What do you want to do with it? And it will be in there will have whatever value they've just set it to. So we do the case remaining equals 25, new value will be 25. And now with both a getter and setter in place, we can go ahead and modify things directly. So here is uh, Archer being made with 14 days, taken four days. I'll then modify vacation remaining to be five days. And then print, let's do vacation allocated here. And press play. Boom, nine. So we've said there are four days taken. We've said also that there's five remaining. And so our code says, well, you've taken uh, uh, four, remaining is five, and therefore allocated must be nine, hence our output here. Now Swift UI uses these computed properties extensively. You'll see them in the very first project you make. So have a go at figuring them out, but give them time, they do make a lot of sense.